Hello, I'm Charlie Taylor and welcome to Chapter 3. Today, domestic, corporate, industrial and economic espionage is a very big business, costing us literally billions and billions of dollars each year. So big as a matter of fact that you have every reason to be concerned and it justifies the purchase of this DVD. While no one knows for sure what the actual losses are, here are a few of the reported estimates. In 1999, the FBI and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce reported that U.S. companies lose about $2 billion per month to corporate espionage and that 95% of losses go undetected or that they're suppressed by companies that don't want their customers or shareholders to know about their vulnerabilities. Also in that same year, a PricewaterhouseCoopers survey for the American Society for Industrial Security of Fortune 1000 companies reported losses of $45 billion. Okay, here's what's really scary about this number. Of the 1,000 companies, only 97 companies responded to the survey. And of that, 45% of those responding reported losses from the theft of their proprietary information. And in 2001, the American Society for Industrial Security reported that intellectual property losses in the U.S increased a little over 30% to $59 billion. And if you think these numbers are high, just wait till you hear this. The Office of the National Counterintelligence Executive, which is responsible for collecting this type of data for the government, reported to the Congress in 2002 that the combined cost of foreign and domestic or industrial espionage, including the theft of intellectual property, was as high as $300 billion a year and rising. Okay, now here's what the really scary part is. It's not just major corporations that are the victims. There's over 600,000 businesses in the U.S. with more than 20 employees and more than 98,000 companies with more than 100 employees. And you know what? No one asked them if they'd ever been a victim of corporate or industrial espionage. Based upon my personal experience, I can assure you that more than you can imagine have been. For I have personally found evidence of electronic eavesdropping at law firms, banks, insurance companies, hospitals, and many small service and manufacturing companies. Most all the telephone calls I have received from clients and potential clients was because of their knowledge that they had been a victim of some kind of industrial or economic espionage. So, by now you're probably wondering who is attempting to spy on whom and who actually does the dirty work. Well, not all businesses play by the rules. Many companies have whole departments dedicated to competitive intelligence collection. These units may resort to a wide range of collection activities so varied as to include bribery, eavesdropping, searching through garbage, and scams to trick unsuspected employees. This is probably most common with Japanese companies. But there have been well-publicized cases where Raytheon and other well-known companies have been accused of hiring outside personnel to eavesdrop on or steal documents from a competitor. In other words, just because a company has a well-known name doesn't mean that it plays by the rules. One thing's for sure, all the reported incidents of industrial or economic espionage benefited a current or potential competitor. Now, let's talk about who's actually doing the espionage work. At the end of the Cold War, intelligence agencies, both here and abroad, were left with a much smaller workload. Many foreign governments now use their intelligence agencies to spy on American businesses. This is most commonly referred to as economic espionage, since it directly benefits the companies in their countries. You'd be amazed at the list of so-called allies that have been suspected of economic espionage on American businesses. While I don't have a current list, one of the previous reports to Congress by the FBI included such countries as Canada, France, Germany, and Israel as being known as being actively involved in economic espionage against American companies. Of course, many intelligence agencies in our own country downsized at the end of the Cold War, leaving a large number of highly trained espionage agents unemployed. While most of the agents have gone on to traditional professional lives, more than a few have become mercenaries and offer their services to almost anyone who will pay for their special skills. 
These are the guys that probably scared me the most since they had the broadest range of skills, experience, and particularly boldness. And they're extremely easy to find. Just pick up a copy of a mercenary magazine, many of whose publishers also publish books on eavesdropping to see what I mean. To these guys, it's all a game, and they're fearless. Okay, the list continues to a few large and small security companies. Wackenhut, one of the nation's largest and most prominent security companies, has been accused of eavesdropping several times. While I can't vouch for the credibility of these stories, the Internet is full of information regarding their involvement with eavesdropping and industrial espionage. Private investigators also make this list. While most are completely legitimate, over the years, many private investigators have been known to be involved in illegal eavesdropping activities. This is probably the most common source for domestic or spousal eavesdropping in small industrial espionage operations. And then you have the true electronics man who takes pride in designing and building unique eavesdropping devices. These guys build some of the most difficult to detect eavesdropping devices and really know what they're doing. My friend Pat McCann, who I discussed in Chapter 1, was one of these people. Okay, I'd like to wrap up this chapter by sharing with you some information. While I can't vouch for the validity of the information, several websites have published this data allegedly compiled by the U.S. Department of State in 1997. Under the title of Illegal Eavesdropping Industry Data in the United States Per Year. I'll warn you, this information almost seems unbelievable. This report claims that the total value of eavesdropping devices sold in the U.S. was $888 million that year, and that additionally, $435 million were spent for entry and initial installation services, and that another $891 million was spent for the ongoing maintenance of the listening post operations. For a total U.S. revenues of goods and services, of $2.13 billion in 1999. This same report says that the median cost of a typical non-corporate eavesdropping device, such as for a domestic case, is $734. And that the median cost of a typical corporate espionage eavesdropping device installed is $57,500 and that there are 6,550 corporate eavesdropping incidents per year. This report also says that the average impact or loss to each corporate target was 1.25 million and that the total number of illegal eavesdropping devices sold in the U.S. that year was 712,000. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for Chapter 3. In the next chapter, we're going to jump into the more technical side of things. We're going to talk about eavesdropping bugs and radio transmitters. I'll see you there.